Hello, and welcome to Tales from the Twists, a podcast where we'd like to talk about Around the Twist, an 80s, 90s, and 2000s television show from Australia made primarily for children. My name is Joe Lewis, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Anthony Bull. Hey, Joe, how's it going? I am brilliant, as always. How are you? Well, I'm pretty brilliant as well, I guess. Got a pretty nice sounding room here, isn't it? Yeah, we got our... I, I tell you what, if... If you at home are thinking, it looks like Joe and Anthony... Uh, well, it looks like Joe and Anthony. Well, it sounds like yeah. Joe and Anthony are recording from a gigantic shed. Well, today we are. Yes. If you thought we were recording from an Afghan cave, well, you are close. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. There is enough things in here that you could probably make some uh, no highly flags, dangerous... Though. We need a black flag. Explosives. Yeah. No, no black flags, though I would be concerned if there was a black flag. I would here. be too. I would be too. I think Asia would be very, very concerned. They'd be watching you. They'd be before. very interested. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, what's this flag here, mate? It's a pirate flag. It's an Islamic pirate. <laughs> Today, we're joined together to speak about sloppy jalopy. Not a tasty food, yeah. but an episode of Round the Twist. Season two, why'd in you, fact. Why do you think it was a uh, food? It's a food, a sloppy jalopy. I thought it was sloppy. I think you're thinking of sloppy Joe. No, <laughs> that's right. You no. hate Joe. Yeah, no, anyway. no, no, yeah. no. So a sloppy jalopy is a car, though. What? How is it a car? That's what a sl- it's a sloppy because a jalopy is like a crappy car. So you call it a sloppy jalopy. It's like a sort of a banged up sh- shitty car. Slo- so when I heard sloppy jalopy, I thought, oh, it's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be about a car that's I don't know emits poisonous gas. No, you're wrong because sloppy jalopy is a tasty mashed potato and gravy dish. It, is it really? No. Okay, there you I go. I just made it up. You just made it up to justify it. All right. I Fair think enough. though I'm probably right. Yep. We begin the episode with a hobo at a tip, as you do when an episode is named sloppy jalopy, and he's rummaging through some trash. What, what, what is the preferred term in Australia? Trash or garbage or rubbish? It's rubbish, right? Uh, rubbish. I think garbage is... Rubbish. Rubbish is Rubbish is, is Australian. Trash, trash is American. Trash is American. I think... I feel like you can say trash. I don't know. Yeah. I think it goes... In order of preference, I'd go rubbish, then uh, trash, then garbage. I mean, trash is just stuff you throw on the side of the road, but rubbish is stuff I don't know, you could collect and you put it in a plastic bag and you throw it to the bin man. You know, that's like, look at that rubbish on the ground. I would be perfectly happy saying that. But garbage, uh, it's American. No. American. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you know why? Why um, we have these different words? What do the What do the English say? I think they call it um, rubbish. Know, belling popper. Belling popper. Belling popper. Yeah. Rubby, rubby Roston. Rubby Roston. Yes. Rubby bloody rusty rubby Robston. Oh yes. You're down the street, you know, down by the lane. Down by the lane. That's Actually, probably because they're British, right? And because they colonized yes. a whole bunch of the world, chances are it would be a very like a, another racist. term would be a very racist term, probably for an Irishman, or oh, something, right? Okay. Just be like, oh, the bloody um, what is something like an Irish racist term? I don't, I don't know. know. It's the potato bloody potatoes. Ta- it's the potatoes. That's what they call it. Taters. Tater tato toppers. Tater toppers. Yeah, tater toppers. Yeah. I don't know. So when they go to America, they're like, oh, we want some tater toppers. I'm like, no, what the fuck? <laughs> People in America eat trash. <laughs> So this hobo is rummaging through the the tip or the rubbish dump and finds he finds some rings I believe are earrings and he also finds a packet of Colgate. This, keeping in mind, is in the teaser portion of the episode, which we get at the beginning of each episode to give us the title of the episode and also a little bit of a taste of what's to come. And in season two, often part of the episode itself. Yeah. So the episode will generally spill over into the into the teaser, yeah. whereas in the season one of Around the Twist, we often just had a thematic bite of the episode rather than something that actually happens. So remember, you had yeah. a weird out of place scene just to give you a taste of the theme it's, of the episode. It, it, it wouldn't necessarily, necessarily be related or yes, anything like that. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. This, one, this one sort of is, you know. Yeah, it is. It, like, it's part the, of the, the character is related to it. And, um, I found this episode as well interesting because it was like this must have been the um the product placement or brand dumping ground because there must have been like six or seven I've written them down uh product placements it's so obvious you know yeah yeah season two of Round the Twist was still on Channel Seven yeah back in the early nineties yeah. and so they could get away with having product placement whereas they couldn't in the later ABC episodes so there's a lot of Things, especially especially in this episode, as you were saying, a lot of moments where you see brands that you wouldn't normally see in a, an ABC TV show. So we start off with Colgate. Yeah. The hobo finds a packet of Colgate. 
and the, and it's, and you can tell it's product placement. I mean, even though know, you can see the brand, you know it is because when he puts it on his teeth, he brushes his teeth with his fingers, and then his teeth has like this shine. It's like um, the well, it doesn't shine, but it's like that classic, you know, cartoon um, cartoon where like the light shimmers off his teeth, and it's you use Colgate because it makes your teeth good. Don't use McLean's because they're the devil. But is it really though? Because his teeth didn't get cleaner; they still looked rotten. They just had a shine. Look, it was good. Though that they did it like that, I mean, I could, they, I could have expected them to just ham it up and be like, "Yes, oh wow, my teeth are all white now." That would have just took me out of the whole thing, as opposed to just he brushes his teeth for the first time and he gets a shine. I could accept that, and that's a fine product. Placement. You could, you could accept that, could you? That, that's fine with your high levels of, of standards of children's television, right? Yeah, well, I mean, also I'm in marketing, so like I can, I can accept anything. They could come out and say, "Buy Colgate," and I go, "That's a good product placement." Good, good indeed. Yeah, I mean, who else is funding this show? I'm going to get funny from the ABC. So we start the actual episode itself in a some sort of place. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of place is this? Is this a hairdresser's or is there places that exist solely for piercing ears? Because that's what is about to happen in the yeah, scene. Right, like, I mean, th- there was no tattooing, but... Ah, you um, think they're in a tattoo parlor? I don't think they're in a tattoo parlor. I think they're in a hair and makeup sort of area. Because, like, okay. um, hair and makeup, and it was clearly, like, you could imagine... You can also get your ears pierced at a hair and makeup place because if you're getting hair and makeup done, you know, it makes sense you could do piercing as well for people who aren't pierced, right? Yes. But you'd also have tattoo parlors where you'd get the piercings. Yes. Only because how frequent would it be that you'd get people to pierce their ears? I feel like the tattoo parlor is probably for more extreme piercing than ears. Yeah, I reckon They so would too. probably do that. Like, I've never had my ears pierced, so I wouldn't know where to go for them. Neither. But I'd assume, yeah, you'd go to a hairdresser or something like that, I imagine. I have no idea. If, another of the things yeah, another that we thing know that nothing we'd about. Like to know about. Yeah, if someone's like, "Hey, I, 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 I pierce little girls' ears," which sounds really weird when you say it like that. It does sound weird. Yeah, but if you do that, tell us where do you work. Don't you don't have to tell us Not exactly specifically where, I work, where you but like work. the kind of place you work, so you don't get fired. Because that would be creepy. Yeah, it would be a little creepy. It's like asking someone where they live, but you don't want to know exactly where they live. You just kind of know like the, the suburb area, so you can get a yeah. When, fix where when it you is. meet a new colleague at work, oh, where do you live? Oh, I live at this address, and you know, I'm usually there between really that. between nine a.m. to five p.m. I'm not there on weekends. I usually leave the back door open and the, and the key under the porch. I do not have a dog. There is a cat though. <laughs> the gate will be unlocked. That does not bite. <laughs> So the they in question that we are talking about is yes. Bronson and Pete, who have decided to get their ears pierced because it's the early 90s and, and that's was cool, it, apparently. Yeah. Bronson is first, which is kind of, you know, not the greatest move of Pete, and he flips out. He doesn't want to do it. He's had yeah. enough. He's too scared. He bails. And Pete gets his done. No worries. And the lady asks, is this some kind of new fashion? All, all the boys are getting theirs done at the moment. Was it? Was it? It was a big thing in the 90s, I right? Think so, yeah. I think it was a big thing to get like piercings done in the 90s. I remember at one stage, it was a thing because it was a punky thing to do. I never got my ears pierced because one, I didn't want to get pierced in the ear. I thought that was like, I don't understand them. That was the, like, that thing. was like the, the hangover from the 70s, right? Where the punks would, you know, pierce them with, what are they called? The big bobby pins? Oh yeah, no, like close hang, clo- yeah, like, um, close clo- safety yeah, pins or whatever? Safety pins, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they, so. that was kind of a resurgence in the 90s because of, you know, the punk and hardcore movement with like stuff like Blink-182. Yeah. Right? Also, like, you could argue that it's actually um, not just the Blink-182 thing. Because I, I was looking at the ears, which side yes. you got it in, right? Because, you know, one side is apparently the gay side. And yes. It's, and it's that way because you know, they sort of pioneered that idea of having one just solo ring in. And you could argue that they also, with this historic stereotype of being very in with fashion and all that stuff, could have actually led to the normalization of one ear um, one earring in or making it look a little bit more acceptable. Okay. Like, because you wouldn't know if someone was gay just by having an earring in, you know? Is that why they did it? So they could identify each other? I, I guess that's why they did it. I mean, otherwise, why would you have a gay side? I if, don't know. If that's still a thing, I don't even know. If you're gay and you're like, was hey, it, it's was it, a thing. Was it even ever a thing or is this just an urban myth created by primary schoolers? I, I think it is a thing. I think it's like, it may not have, it may have started off as being not true, but then people started... I don't know, yes. associating with it. And then when people, gay guys got their own earrings done, they're like, well, I better do it in the right ear because I'm yeah. right. And the people who were not gay were like, oh, I better get it in the left ear because I'm not gay. And then so, just made the myth true, I guess. Like many urban myths, if you believe it enough, it eventually comes true. Just like Sasquatch yep. and uh, Lockless Monster. And also Lockless. Lockless, Lockless Monster. Lockless Monster. Not to be confused with, with the, the Loch Ness, Ness Monster. monster I'm talking about the Loch Ness Monster. And of course Slenderman. 
Slender Man. Well, I mean, like the girl who bloody um, the Slend- two girls who sacrificed that person, yeah. to Slender Man. I was like, well, I guess technically that kind is- of makes them a little more real now because you know, in their minds, it motivated their actions. Yeah, real well. <laughs> the two myths that I mentioned weren't actually urban myths, but is Slender Man considered an urban myth? It's a more of an internet folklore, right? Yeah, that's sort of what it is, I guess. But I mean, internet folklore still disseminates across urban culture. Yes, that's level. true. So, I mean, what... You know what, that's that's that's, that's like for folklorists. You, what, you just do that. What is actually too. an urban myth? Because I... I think I always, I, thought thought that was a, I always thought that was something like, you know, a myth in the city. But it's yeah, not, so... It's kind of... You know, they always talk about the urban myths, like the tablet that you can put in your car that your car will run forever. That's an urban myth, right? What... Tablet. The tablet you put in the fuel tank and yeah. your car will just run mm. and not you won't have to fill it up. That's retarded. That's, that's the a, most retarded thing I've ever heard. That's an urban myth. Yeah, well, it's a retarded myth and anyone who does it probably is, blows up their engine. Candyman is as well, right? Yeah, Candyman or Bloody Mary because that was supposed to be... Bloody Mary? Yeah. That um, kind of counts. The one... What about the one with the guys like... Or is that an urban legend? One where it's what? like... Um, What's the a difference between an urban A hitchhiker and a picks up and hitchhiker, a, a girl on the side of the road in the middle of the night, drives her back to her house, yeah. right? And then goes to the front door or something to see, you know, yep. where she was. And she goes, oh no, she's been dead for like 10 years. And this is not the first time that someone drew, you know, dropped her back because the ghost was how, always how does the How do the mechanics of him dropping her back work? Uh, I don't know. I don't, he, I don't so know where the story goes. She's in the car with him. She's in the they car. They get out. They go up to the door and all of a sudden she's not there because she's dead. Well, I think maybe she disappears before she reaches to the address. Then when he gets to the address, right? He realizes he that realizes, she's disappeared. But she's like, what the hell happened? Right? So obviously he's like, maybe she fell out of the car. She he doesn't know. So he's going to go to the house because that's where she lives. Maybe someone could give some better excuse. I would, I would not say, go I to the house. I lost this woman, right? If she I disappeared in my car, I would drive home or somewhere that the ghost would never find me. Well, you don't know it's a ghost yet. You think it might be she if jumped out or bailed out? somebody disappears in your car, how does somebody jump out of your car without you noticing? I don't know, man. How does that happen? I don't know. It doesn't happen. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're drunk. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. Why a... are you driving drunk, Anthony? I don't know why I'm driving drunk, but that's why I'm doing it. So I go to the door and I go, do you know, do you know why the lady jumped out of my car? And they go, because she's a ghost. And I go, oh, man, you know, that makes you know sense. what that's called? What? That's called improper driving practices, not urban folklore. Well, there you go. No, there you go. Don't drive drunk and pick up ghosts. It's a bad idea for all involved. Yes. Don't, don't. Don't drink in anything. Just stay home. Stay home in a corner by yourself with a bottle of whiskey. It'll never end well. And cry. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't be outside. Pete now has an earring. Yes. And Bronson does not because he's a chicken. Not that I blame him. I wouldn't get it done either. No, I wouldn't get it done either. Also, he's going to have that. The second they get to school, Snapple will say, get yeah. that out. And then- or Splooge. Splooge, Splooge will definitely, Splooge say, definitely, definitely will take that out. That if he's like, no longer a baby. You go to school. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know why they got an ear piss, because they could. It was cool, and they wear it on the weekend. And then their ear gets infected because, I don't know, they're allergic to nickel. They leave the whatever shop that they're in and go outside onto the street, and there's a big commotion mm. outside, and Linda and Fiona? It's Fiona, right? Uh, yes, yeah, it's Fiona. Fiona. Linda and Fiona are sitting on top of what looks like a Nell van. So as we learned last episode, yeah. that Nell is now running for Senate. Opposing Mr. Gribble. So, Linda and Fiona are now apparently attached to to that campaign, and they're campaigning against the tip. Yeah. Okay? And the way that they're campaigning is no waste for the West, which doesn't make an entire amount of sense. Because they're on the East Coast. Well, are they? Yeah. If they're they're gone by the Australian location, they're totally on the East Coast, right? But they've said no waste for the West, which... Just quickly, is meaning that they're campaigning against the big dump in their town. Yeah. They don't want that anymore. We'll get into a little bit more detail about that in a minute. But no waste for the West specifically. So if we look at Australian geography, as you were mentioning, yeah, most of the cities in Australia are on the East Coast. Yeah. Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, other ones that no one cares about. And then on the West Coast yeah. is Perth. However, you know that... Co- I can't remember what it's called. The coast between... I, I'm pretty sure I know where our location is. I'm pretty sure it's on the east coast, but... You yeah, go under, well, you go because underneath, we thought it was near Melbourne. We did, right? You go underneath uh, Victoria, yeah. and then you go towards Adelaide. And that that coast that's between Adelaide and uh, Melbourne, that is yes. that would technically be west. I mean, yes, it's south, but if you're looking... If you're going left or right as a bearing, yes. you would still be able to say, this is west. Which makes me also think that maybe it's on the west of the city. So yeah. it'd just be like, I don't know, the West Point dump or something. Okay. Mm-hmm. West Beach dump. 
Yeah, that could happen, right? Oh, so you're saying that the city is kind of far east and they go back a little bit curving on the shoreline and that's west. Yeah, well, it, it, all you need to do is like, it could just jut out a little bit at certain areas or even on a river or something like that. Like, like a peninsula. Go to Brisbane is a good example. You know how like the Brisbane River curls in like an S faction? Yes. So if you go on one part of the, different parts of the uh, Brisbane River, you could say no such and such for the west, no such and such for the south, no such and such for the north. And depending on where you are, those will all be totally accurate terms. Like you're in South, if you're in South Bank, nothing for South Bank. But if you go to the north side, not, nothing for the north side. New Farm, can't say anything for the east, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, like it's interesting. What's the it's interesting thing to talk Port about? Miranda? Port Miranda. Yeah. Or Paradise, as we like to refer to it. I'm trying to think like... As some form of limbo. No, I guess I was trying to think if there was a better thing in there, you know? What do you mean? Port Miranda is... Is not a dumping ground, you know. Oh, you're trying some, to think of a better marketing term for their campaign. Like, tr- no west, waste for the west. You know, maybe they are actually on the east and just decided that east didn't rhyme with waste, so that they just chose sense. west yeah. instead because they're idiots. I don't know. They could have said no sludge for the south. Ah, That's but maybe that. they're not in the south. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're in paradise. So the idea of this campaign is to get rid of the tip, which Gribble. Mm -hmm. believes is great for the town because it brings in money, it brings in jobs. All valid points. Yeah, yeah, valid Captain Gribble, captain of capitalism. Yeah. And Nell, on the other hand, doesn't want the tip there because she just thinks that the city is dumping all their waste into small country town. Yeah, I think it's like it was also in the expansion of the tip. Yes. Well, like... Well, both things. Both things, yeah. Nell wanted to abolish it completely and Gribble wanted to expand it. Yeah. So you've got... You don't have a neutral position. Yeah. Like it's, and that's tough. Like I imagine waste management would be a really tough thing to do. How could you not? Like there is an incentive, like if you've got spare land and there's not much around you to take on the trash of the urban cities because you're going to make a lot of money from that and that money will spur yes. economic development. But of course, there's the environmental impact and all that other crap that comes with it. And do you want to be known as trashy Port Miranda or Port Trash is what it probably would port be Port Trash. Called. Port garbage, Port rubbish, you know. See, having cities and having it's infrastructure... Like the suburbs around Ipswich. Yeah. yeah. Riverview is where the dump is. Yes. Yeah. It's also got a low socioeconomic value. And the dump yeah, has a huge... because wants to live near a dump. Exactly. Yeah. But, but the problem someone is... has to live near a dump and there has to be a dump. You can't live in the modern society without having yeah. a dump. Well, this is what I was trying to say yeah. before you cut me off repeatedly. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to have modern infrastructure, you need to have a dumping ground for the uh, unsatisfactory off products. What are people that want to... Throw away some society. And someone might say, ah, oh, but that's not an aspect of capitalist society where we're cons- over consumption. And it's like, a little bit, yeah. But then that doesn't solve the immediate issue of trash. Being right? a- we can discuss the philosophical merits yes. of capitalism versus a more sustainable style of capitalism to the cows component. We could even work that in. That's going to take 10, 20 years to try to institute new policies. What are you going to do with the trash till then? Being a staunch libertarian, yes, I believe that the free market is the greatest thing to ever happen to humans. Yeah. Okay, and so the idea of the free market suggests that everything will balance out eventually. Yeah. So having being so upset about a thing like this is kind of I how don't does know. how does the free market ca- um how does the free market work to rectify? global problems that people... What, like that, that, what? Oh, okay. like, what what, what problems that, are we trying to solve with capitalism today? Uh, global warming, I guess. Okay. Like, the global warming is something in the future, like it's 100 years in the future. So, Why do I care about what happens to... In fact, actually, you know what's a better one? Why do I care? If I don't have children, why do I care about the future? To be honest, I'm dead. Well, you My don't have to. Why should you? Like, well, then the world's going to get fucked up. But why is that your problem? Then why should? But what about other people? You know, like you know, you can I mean, care like, about what you want to care, really. Then we're going to kill the planet. We're going to kill everybody. Well, it's, not necessarily. It, like. the, the the main problem that people have with the free market and capitalism, in particular with global warming, just this one issue, right? Or even just any is that major. The the free like, market does not automatically provide a market for the environment, right? Yeah. That's not innate. Yeah. It often has to be created. And that's where the idea of the carbon tax or a carbon trading scheme comes from. Yeah. Creating a market for those emissions. Yeah. Okay. But I would say that's not necessarily necessary because it will eventually balance out because yeah. people will want cleaner products, right? Yeah. If you're concerned about the environment, but you'll want a cleaner product. That, that, that takes a social... it takes a, It takes longer to, like, it's to kinda, happen, it's like this, but like, it will happen. It's, it's kind of like... Um, Losing weight, dude, except on a Why? way more or less 
in okay, the uh, personal expand scale. Expand on your analogy. You could either A, eat nice foods, yes. not observe a good dietary routine. You don't even have to go to the gym all that much. And you might even get fat. And if enough people get fat, then the socially constructed ideas of what's okay and permissible become a little bit more lax. You're okay with being fat. In fact, being fat, oh, it's a symbol of wealth. That's why I'm fat. Ergo, I should just be well, happy with my weight. What? But the downside is that you will die if you eat too much and you you but know you would... exercise. But with the planet, you'll be dead before that happens. Okay. So what that... motivation do I have to even make a change? Well, what motivation does anybody I'm have not, to make that I'm change? I'm not quite sure where you're headed with that analogy, but if I could tackle your analogy. Yes. Often, when we think about beauty and attractiveness, the things that are more beautiful are beautiful often, not always, yes. but sometimes and often more valuable and beautiful because they're harder to attain or more rare. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we get the thing in the Middle Ages where it's people who had a little bit more weight about them, not necessarily fat. They were just well fed because yeah. food was hard to come by. It was harder to. Oh, actually so it's like it's a lux- luxury good. So that's why, like, yeah. that actually makes so a lot of sense. Now, that actually makes tons of sense. Now, to me. Yeah. people are getting fatter. Yeah. The people who are fitter or skinnier or in better shape are going to be more attractive. Which is why, like, they're harder to attain. Gym ads always so, have this higher prestige yes, to it. Yeah. Though there will be fluctuation, it will eventually good balance good. out and probably go back the other way. Good on just you. depends on. It was, good, it, was good, it, was good, it was a good app analysis. Okay, now if we can look at the global problem, right? It's a little bit harder. I'm not sure where you were headed with the analogy, yeah. so I can't comment. No, my, my analogy was just that, like, you sustainable short-term gains, yes, will always, will almost always outweigh long, 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 long-term benefits. Okay, just because if you're not alive to see it, unless you have kids, why do you give a shit? And most people wouldn't. Well, you don't. You don't have to, right? Yeah. The thing is that being a person, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. But if enough people care, in which a lot, a lot of people do, and that's the way that society is heading, more people care about the environment. So in my opinion, they're going to be wanting more greener goods, right? Yeah. Goods that are cleaner and better for the environment. And companies that say, oh, look, we're going to plant this many trees or cut down on this or do whatever, people will be more attracted to buy those goods. So then it passes on to yeah. the environment. But what people are saying now is that it's too late and, you know, we're past the point of no return and the, the, the planet's going well, apparently to they're, collapse. They're, they're inventing carbon scrubbing things. That you, no, wait, that's... No, wait, sorry. Wasn't no. that the plot of Snowpiercer? I watched Snowpiercer on the weekend. Thank you. <laughs> I know that there is some sort of carbon catching thing, but I was like, there's some carbon thing they're going to spray in the atmosphere. And I was like, wait, no, that's that's yeah, that, that's, 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 that's Snowpiercer. Spoilers, that destroys the world and puts it into it's not really an spoiler. It's, it's like the first two minutes of the movie. First 30 seconds. It's, if you weren't watching the screen, well, you wouldn't know why it's snowing. It depends <laughs> <laughs> It depends how strict you are of spoilers. If you don't want to know the first 30 seconds of a movie, yeah. you know, I'm... I'm I wouldn't want to. You gotta do a spoiler go warning. You gotta go spoiler warning for Snowpiercer. No, wait, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about the actual episode at hand. The more direct problem with the dump from Nell's side is that the fumes are coming straight out of the the waste dump, and they're going on to a mutton bird rookery. And these mutton birds are coming all the way from China, and the problem is that these toxic waste fumes are killing the birds. Okay, what do they do? What? The what birds. do what do? What I don't know. I don't know what a mutton do. bird is. But th- this is the problem, that it, it's hurting the mutton birds. And that's why these people are concerned. So it doesn't matter what the actual issue is. It just matters that these people are concerned about it, right? Yeah. Now, on the other hand, Gribble is saying that we need jobs in this town. You know, small towns have to support these themselves are, these, somehow. These, I imagine that... that these, aren't just gr- these aren't just cartoonishly evil political Well, like, like uh, ideas. are a little bit. They are a little bit. But these are legitimate things that you will hear people debate. And because they are... Big issues. Yeah. You I, know. I have a problem with this episode because Gribble is legitimately concerned about, you know, jobs for the small town. I yeah. assume that Port Noranda saying Port used to be some sort of trading town, but, you know, we don't see a lot of that, so we're, I'm assuming that it, it's not really a trading port anymore. Maybe that's moved to the main city itself. Okay? Yeah, so, how is, where are the jobs coming from in this community? And Gribble's saying that, you know, this waste dump is providing jobs for the community, which is good for the economy, which yeah. is a good thing. And that, those motives are being portrayed as, you know, oh, you know, that's a bad thing. And Gribble makes a quote here. He yeah. says, people are more important than animals, which... I, like, I, I, he, he's, I when he's yeah. saying that, it's, he's being portrayed as a bad guy, but... Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, if an animal and, an, and a person was dangling from a cliff, most people would say a human. But that being said, that's not always true, because if my cat was dangling from a cliff and Adolf Hitler was dangling from a cliff, I'd probably go rescue my cat and then hand Adolf Hitler a rock or two. A ro- just, why would you hand him a rock? I don't know. Yeah. And he'll go, what is this? And I'll go, it's a rock. 
and then I'll hand him more rocks and he'll put them in his pocket because he won't is let it, go is of this it. A, is this an ant thing? Why? Is it an ant thing? Uh, it's a joke from a movie. I'm sure somebody got that. No, it's just you give someone a rock because you just throw it at them. Bugs life. No. They give each other... It gives it a rock and they go, oh, it must be an ant thing to give oh, someone yeah, yeah, a yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I know. No, yeah, but that, that my point is that you can, I guess some people say, like, objectively, you're supposed to look up to uh, humans over animals, but then yes. you would say your dog Chance over you over Adolf Hitler. Yes, But probably. you have to know that person as Adolf Hitler. Or, I don't know, whoever you don't like. Well, it's an interesting thing, because it, it the, the motives are different, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter. And what what I was trying to get at before. The, the, because, this because, is, because this is politicized, yes. right? This happens with so many things. It, it turns into a political issue that yeah. cannot really really reach with compromise yeah. because it looks like you're becoming a weak politician who can't stand up for their values yes. when the obvious compromise is okay well if there's issues with these birds can we devise a system where we expand the dump or move the dump yeah. into a better location that yeah. will be better for the environment yeah. and also assures a bit more jobs we're going to have to give and take a little more or See, can we move the birds a little? Would they be acceptable with that? Is that possible? Get an ornithologist out there. Maybe he says, yeah, you can. I think that in this episode, though Gribble's portrayed as a bad, cartoonish, Captain Capitalism type guy, yeah. I think Nell is actually the bad guy here. Yeah, I, because... I think she's being... Not because of her political view, right? But yeah. because of her motives. She makes a quote, and a skipping a tiny bit ahead, yeah. but she says... You can push us around, but in the end, at the end of the day, voting it's the voting power that talks. And that's kind of suggesting yeah. that she doesn't care so much about this. She's only in it for the votes. Yeah, it's sort of like that. You can tell us what you want. You can try to push us around, but our votes, you know, we can't just yeah. we vote. And um, voting power is what matters. People power matters. And I get that, I guess. But she does seem like to be only in it for the votes. And I, I actually reckon she is in only in it for... Well, only she's to only in Gribble. it to beat Gribble, to stop Gribble. But that being said, Gribble's only in it for control. The money. The money and money, control. Money yeah. and power, you know, and prestige. Because he yeah. likes to be seen. At least, I guess, at least Gribble's motives are clear. Yes. Whereas Nell's aren't. It comes back to the thing, would you rather trust the devil that you know or the, or the devil, devil that you don't? don't. Yeah. We know Gribble is only interested in himself, right? Yeah. So we can kind of predict his moves. But we also Whereas have to Nell's, always make sure that... Nell's motives are a little bit harder to predict. Yeah. What's she going to do? Would she? Because she might be like, you need to save the lighthouse under any cost because whatever. She might yeah. give him a false motive. When in reality, maybe you do need to get rid of the lighthouse. Maybe it's... Maybe it does need to be destroyed yeah. because it's in disrepair or something along those lines. She will just save it because it needs to be saved. So... Another thing that the people of Port Narendra are upset about is that they're processing the waste for the, from the city. We talked a little bit about this, and uh, a truck rolls up, yeah. and Gribble says, we do not process any waste from the city. And then the truck driver says, oh, hi, I'm here with the delivery from the city, which does not <laughs> carry him any favour. Then Nell makes the quote that you can't push us around because we have the voting power, right? Yeah. So Gribble makes a turn. He says... Well, Matron says to him... Yeah, we should... We yeah. should there's something in this. Yeah. I mean, also, yeah, it's like, I'd be careful of votes, which I think is, like, Matron actually displays some... Strategic in- thought. Yeah, and, and a lot of the things, yeah, this episode at least, and says you probably should cons- reconsider what you're doing. The problem is, he looks like a flip-flopper, he looks like someone who will do yeah. anything for votes, and he just can't be trusted. I listen to a lot of Survivor podcasts, yeah. and the thing that we talk about is, if you're going to make a move, if you're like a, a godfather, it's worse to pull out a gun and point it at someone and not pull the trigger, than to pull out the gun, point at someone, and actually kill them. Yeah. You need to go through with your move. Otherwise, yeah. you look weak and you don't achieve what you're trying to do. If yeah. you do actually pull the trigger and execute the move that you're trying to do, yeah. then you actually accomplish what you're trying to do. You might lose favor, but you do actually accomplish your mission. Yeah. If you back down and don't pull the trigger, then you get the bad effects of actually doing yeah. it and you, you don't get the positives of actually fulfilling that task. Yeah. So th- this is kind of my, my, what happens to find here, weird right? is that How did Gribble organize these things? Like, organize the dumping? He's like, evil. He has connections. That's the problem. Is like, he's not actually in power yet. So that he shouldn't have any real authority. I know he might have some influence, but he shouldn't have the authority he has to make these calls. Yeah. The, the dump runner, the person who's yeah. managing the dump, should be also facing this stuff, you know? Like, because he, he would have been the one who had had the final say. Yes. And then it would have, I would have wanted to look at, hey, um, has he given you any economic incentive? Yeah. Because I could imagine there would be some bribery going in or some sort of palm washing a little going in there. Yeah. Because, I mean, the dump owner, he gets paid a salary. So what kind of money does he actually make from it? In the little squirt episode, yeah. we get that one scene where he's making... It, it seems like a drug deal. So I think we're being set up for a gribble that has his hands in a lot of pies. Yeah. Like, this guy might be, you know, Captain Capitalism or whatever, but he's got some shady behind-the-scenes deals happening yeah. here. 
you know, he's making some personal money off this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, and I love how he says, and then he goes, no, we don't want that trash. He tells to yeah. the, the truck driver, right? He goes, no, take that trash. We don't want it. And he's winking the entire time at the truck driver. He's like, no, we don't want that. I'm like, oh, you gribble, you. Yeah, so he makes, I don't know if this is a good or a bad decision, but he decides that his public voice will be, oh, we don't want that here for the votes. But he's still going to do it anyway, which yeah. could be a good thing. Maybe the money that he's making out of this deal is a lot, That's but right. it could also be a really bad thing I think if he gets caught, worst which he does. He done. Like the worst thing, like he's never Watergate is the answer to all these things. You know, mm-hmm. just don't do it. Don't do anything. Like don't say or be shady or do something criminal, right? And think you're not going to get caught. I mean, because you might. Or yeah, you might. this would have been called garbage gate, or wait, I wrote it down. Yeah, something like garbage gate, it, trash gate, it depends. stink gate, sludge gate. You have to weigh up the pros and cons. If the the benefits that you're getting from doing the dirty deed are good enough to outweigh the chance of you getting caught and the consequences of being caught, then it might be worth it to do it. Yeah. So we talk about parking fines. Yeah. If you if there's a two hundred dollar fine for parking somewhere but you think the chances of getting caught are quite low and you park there every day yeah and you don't have to pay parking which might be ten dollars a day yeah. so if you park there enough times and you don't get caught often enough it might actually be worth parking there and paying the fine yeah that might actually actually makes sense a bit of a gamble but i get that yeah yeah it's Their life is a gamble isn't it it's it's making a gamble and outweighing the the pros and cons of both decisions and my problem the with it is of both. that um the sludge is stinky like, yes which is just gonna high and not only that it's hard to hide. It's hard to hide and it's hard to not prove that you didn't do it. Like yeah. I mean, you can say, I didn't do that, someone else must have done it. And it's like, even if you didn't, you're a politician, okay? Yeah. Proof or truth is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. What matters is what your voting public thinks. Yeah. Okay? And then you've already been very strongly saying it, you know, we want the um you know, you're gonna expand on the dump, we're pro trash, and that's gonna be politicized as being I'm just yeah. gonna make this into a trash heap. Here's proof. Even if there's no smoking gun, doesn't fucking matter. The dead body says you did it. He also, slightly tangential, but he has no plausible deniability. Yeah, he's not. No he's way actually saying, personally I, involved in the dumping. Yeah, exactly. He needs to. And only that, like, to the other thing is Gribble, right? Gribble Junior is keeping watch. And then when the yeah. twist, the twist spawn, uh, uh, stumble upon him. Yeah. And he goes, Dad, Dad. Yeah. He doesn't go. Uh, he doesn't use like a code name, or he doesn't refer to someone yeah. else. He doesn't pretend that he's just there by accident. And, he, and Gribble should not be there. Gribble's son can be there, but why is Gribble's son there? I don't know. I'll have to beat that kid senseless, you know, teach him a lesson. But no, he should not have been there. Okay, Bad so move. this confrontation is kind of over. Yeah. About the dump, and they're at the dump. I think we forgot to mention that this took place at the dump. Yeah, I think I think people got that. Right? Yeah. So. There's a hobo hanging around, the guy from the start. Yeah. And Junior Gribble says, this is the only waste around here. And they start making fun of the the hobo, the waste man, the vagrant, the tramp, yeah. whatever you want to call him. And Pete comes up to stick up for the homeless person because yeah. he's a good guy, I guess. I don't know. And ends up fighting Junior Gribble. And Junior Gribble falls over into the rubbish heap because mm-hmm. he kind of loses the, the pushing around bout and loses his new earring because apparently he has also got a new earring just like Pete. The trash man says, hey, don't worry about it. You know, here, have some earrings that I found in the dump. So he gives one to Pete and he gives one to Junior Gribble. Mate. These guys are both going to put them on. Good or bad decision? Bad decision. Unless you have some disinfectant and even then it's like, I don't think so. Matron says... You better watch that. And I know it's it's portrayed as like, you know, oh no, she's been some upper sticky, you know. Yeah, it is a little bit. Mm, he, a vagrant. Oh, don't accept the thing from the vagrant. It's like, yes, but that is legitimately trash. That is, you don't know where it's been. You don't know if the guy had hepatitis yeah. or whatever. He could have had any just regular disease or no disease at all. Even just germs. Get an infection in here. Just get yeah. some dead all and wash it. Clean it up. Because, I mean, they seem to be worth some money. They seem to be like some sort of gold, I think, maybe. So, I mean, I guess, I guess you could wear it. But also, there were hoop earrings. Yeah. They look like Why would girls. Why would a you boy look like wear you're a earrings? pirate? You look, yeah, you do. You look like a pirate. I guess that's kind of cool, though. Yeah. What do you think? I, I think all you need to do in this situation is remember the, the trash pipes. Yeah. From season one. Tony Stewart's playing his trash bagpipes. Yeah. In the, in the dump. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't do that. Just don't, don't, don't do it. Like, I understand Anything getting some from cool stuff from the trash, like, but... The dump can be a great place. Yeah, like, if there's a couch that's just, like, completely fine, just doesn't look dirty, you clean it up and you can take it if you want, it's free. But don't, don't wear stuff. Don't put things in don't your... Do don't do it. Don't put things in your body that have been 
in the trash heap. You Especially don't know what's been there or who's been using it. If you pierced your ear today... A fresh open wound, thank you very much. <laughs> you're going to put something with who knows what germs in there. Yep, don't do it. Don't mate. do it. Yeah. Don't Bad idea. ever do it. The Twist Kids yep. begin to stalk Gribble, okay? Because they think that there's something dodgy going on with the, the trash. Yeah. And so they decide to stalk him and they stalk the, the garbage trucks and they eventually see the garbage truck trucks pull up in the middle of nowhere and start dumping waste. Yeah. And the Twist Kids being the season two Twist Kids and being some sort of Captain Planet Avenger people decide to investigate because, you know, we're left-wing hippie commo pinkies and we need to save the environment. Yeah. I guess so. They began patrolling around and they smell the, the garbage, the toxic waste that they're pumping out, and they say, this smells worse than Bronson's feet. Yeah. And they're pumping sludge right into the beach. Probably not the best decision, because A, you can probably see that yep. from the water if you're going through the beach, and it's going to be all over the sand. It, it's C, not hard to be caught. I'm pretty sure the beach is probably one of your top tourist attractions, if yeah. there's anything. Like, that's where people go. Yeah, bad decision uh, is to so gribble. Yeah, you're going to lose money there? What the, what's wrong with you, gribble? There's no, there's no value there. Maybe there is. Maybe, maybe there, there is. Maybe, maybe probably, got, probably gets paid a truckload, or maybe he's under a contract and yeah. people's like, oh, shit, screwed. We don't know what the exit clause. Getting. The exit clause, like exit fee, might have been expensive. He, he could be involved in some really deep stuff here. We never know. It might be some Heisenberg level Breaking Bad stuff, yeah. and this is just you know, there's crystal meth in the garbage or something. It could be. And, you know, if he doesn't do this, he's going to lose his kneecaps. Well, he'll lose a lot more. He'll lose his life, eh? Probably. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows with these things? Junior Gribble catches the Twist Kids and pushes Pete into the waste. Yeah. Now, Pete smells because of this. Now, I want to point out there was Quicksilver product placement, just so you know. Yeah. In season one, Pete would wear Guns N' Roses t-shirts. Yeah. Pretty cool guy. Play the electric guitar. Season two, Pete plays jazz and wears Quicksilver. Must be a surfer guy. Must be the coolest surfer guy we know. Everyone wore Quicksilver in the 90s, though, to be honest. I think so. Yeah, I guess so. Rip Curl shirts. Rip Curl. Um, Quicksilver. Billabong. Billabong. Which is funny because it's the exact opposite of what it is. What do you mean? Billabong is a still puddle of water, right? And yes. Yeah, whereas uh, it's worn by surfers. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, I love that. A little bit ironic. Yeah. Back to the lighthouse. Tony and Faye are working on it, some sort of carving. Sculpture. I what do you call it? it? Is it a I bird? It, I thought it was a bird. Yeah. It, it looked like, like an eye, but I thought it was an uncovered breast. Like I thought it was like a bird's face, but yes. I, 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 don't, I couldn't be sure. It's hard to tell with Tony's work. Being an artist, he's not. Uh... His art's getting better though. Like it's, oh, it's, it depends. It some like episodes, it's... some stuff's pretty good. Yeah, it's like it's not just crap art. It's what was that amazing. one he did? It was a sword or a scythe or something. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, it looked cool. I can't remember what it was, but it looked awesome. I was, I was thinking, you know, well, I could, I could this, that this could be something that I, I would appreciate. If I had children, I probably wouldn't have it in my house. No, yeah, and the like, the one the with change of chores. Yeah, that was a good one. That was that was really that good. Was a nice one. Yeah, that was good. We didn't see enough of this sculpture to be able to assess its artistic merit. Yeah. But Faye is mentioning, Faye being Tony's fiance, she is afraid of heights. So she doesn't want to move into the lighthouse okay. when they get married. Hmm. And suggests, why don't we move into a boat or a railway carriage or a submarine? But Tony says, Bronson will never move. Bronson, the all hater of love. Yeah, hates love. Well, I mean, okay, well, why don't you just live in Nell's shack? I know that Nell. I know Nell th- lives there. That's well, a good reason. Bye, Nell. See ya. I don't know what you're doing here, but see ya. Like, I don't know. Or build a house. Fucking hell. Get, get somebody together. You, you, there's better problems. There's, there's better ways to solve it than I can't live in a lighthouse. Also, or we'll take her to therapy or something. See, cure of a phobia if she's so yeah. afraid of houses. Sometimes when you get into a relationship, you have to make compromises. Yeah. And Tony has kids, and they love the lighthouse, so yeah. I think Faye's going to be the one that has to compromise here. Yeah, I think maybe so too. maybe they could live on the bottom floor of the lighthouse. Yeah, that's or the way I couldn't live in the live in the floor. kitchen. Yeah, I know. No, put up a sleeping bag. Yeah, put up a sleeping get bag. Get over yourself. Kitchen. Yeah, no, you know? there you go. It's Port Miranda. This is the lighthouse. Yeah, wow. so, man up. Yeah, there's tons is that of space incredibly to... sexist? No, it's not. I mean, why? Just because you're you're sleeping in the kitchen, the kitchen happens to be on the bottom floor. I mean, in fact, if it was the your laundry, yes. it'd be like sexist or something, or living room. Oh, I guess you could this live in the new, living room. This new lighthouse layout seems to have a lot more room than season ones, so I'm sure they could find somewhere. Yeah, we'll just build one, whatever. But yeah, you'll just build an find extension. Some, find some magical BS that helps you build shed. things. I don't know. Yeah, the shed. Live in the shed. Make a. I would say make an extension on the ground floor. Live there. Yeah, I would too. That'd be a good idea. Pete and the Twist Kids arrive at the lighthouse and Tony smells him and thinks that he smells disgusting so decides to hose him off in the backyard. Mm. 
Uh, he's very upset that this has happened to Pete. He's fallen in the garbage, fallen in the toxic waste. As I'm going to go... As, as a greenie. As a greenie. Mm. Well, as a father. Well, both things. Like, as a greenie, he'd be pissed that there's illegal dumping. As a father, yes. he'd be annoyed that his, his son got pushed into unknown, potentially toxic waste yes. by Gribble Child. Yeah, and he says he's going to go and talk to Mr. Gribble once and for all. You know? Sort this out. You can't get my kid thrown in toxic waste. Yeah. That's against the rules. Bronson says, you going to bash him up, Dad? And he says, we don't resort to pugilistic solutions, Bronson. And Bronson says, okay, so we're going to bash him up? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Pete's still smelly, possibly for life. He's going to use about 50 litres of aftershave. Probably a poor decision because I feel like you'd smell worse. Yeah, probably. Axe body spray, I guess. What is, what is Axe body spray? Flinks. Basically. Is it just the American version of Lynx? Yeah, for some reason I'm getting caught saying Axe more, probably because of American pop culture, just referring to it as Axe body spray. I've been told by friends of the friends of mine that listen to the podcast that you have an American accent, or a slight American accent. Yeah, that sounds about right. You know, I think it's even brushing off on me. Probably. I, th- I think my accent is fairly Australian, but I was high, uh, camping the other yeah. week, and this Canadian man came up to me, yeah. who was also camping... Who, by the way, him and his wife or girlfriend or pa- well, whatever, yeah. the mother of his children, they had carried a child each on their front, uh, a really? pack on their back. So a child each on the front of them and packs on their back. And they had hiked about seven or eight kilometers Shit. through fairly rough terrain. And you were like this. You were like sitting down like, you, you, you're pretty good at hiking. You were, yeah. like, you were like, they came. I shouldn't be allowed to sit down. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. Oh my god! <laughs> you know they they carried a lot of stuff. But anyway, this this Canadian man came up to me and was talking to me because I don't know friendliness, I guess. Yeah. And uh, oh, uh, where are you from? Is is that an accent? And I was like, oh no, I'm from here. Yeah, that happens to me. I'm actually. from Australia. It's happened to me before. Like I'll be I'll get in a conversation with someone and I'll say, yes. When did oh when, when did you oh when, when did you when come did, to when, Australia? When, no, they didn't say when did you come to Australia. They said things like. Where? Oh, when did you come here? You know, or when did you arrive here? And I was like, this afternoon. Like, I'm like, it, com- it floors me as weird because it's like I think they think I'm American. And I'm like, oh, I came here from Kansas and um, baby back in 2006. Your the, the thing is, your American accent sucks. Yeah, when I try to do it. Yeah, when you try like, to do it. If I can't do it, then it, like I don't even try, and then it comes out because I, I don't know American TV. It's it's becoming a, a thing, right? There's a traveler's accent that yeah. people can pick up from going lots of places. But I think it's increasingly becoming an internet accent. I think so, too. When well, you, like, if you to... listen to media from all over the world, American, English, you, you, whatever, you, you, you're going to mix those accents. You, like, I, I saw this um, saw this current affair yeah. thing once, and this guy was on World of Warcraft, right? Yes. And they was talking about, like, oh, the dude's... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, One changing picked, accent. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, changing... Well, it wasn't changing accent. It was like, oh, you talk like an American while when you talk uh, to them. And it's like... I, that's just how I talk online. It's yeah. because you're hearing a whole bunch of Americans. Yeah. And I used to do that when I used to make YouTube videos. My accent started being way more American. Do you want to drop that? Because I feel like people are going to start looking up your YouTube videos. Unless you deleted them all. You did, didn't you? I did, except for like three, I think. Maybe your I think best on ones. Private. I think I'm private, actually. Yeah. But yeah, the American accents, it's becoming a thing. And the internet accent. Yeah. More than anything. It's not quite American, is it, though? No, it'd be a mix. It'll be like a mix of a whole bunch of different accents. Because I, I, I think I le- consume more British media than I do American. Yeah. But, but I don't know if that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing, because most people who aren't British or Australian think if you have an Australian accent, unless it's like yes. really ochre Australian, they will, first guess will be British and then it'll be yes. Australian. Yes. Yeah. Which is a fair guess. Pete's in the shower, which is becoming a, a thing. Yeah. We've seen a lot of the twists in the, in the baths and in shower. I'm a bit worried, to be honest. Yeah. You know, do we really need to be seeing all this? There's a Europe map shower curtain. Yeah. I was actually trying to see if it was a pre USSR or a ah. post USSR. I thought sure it was just post you know, USSR. Western Europe. No, Eastern, no, no. Yeah, it, was a, it was Russia. It was a big picture of Russia. Oh, I was there? See Britain. Yeah, I could see Britain. It was like, because uh, the, the way the shower curtain was, was like, yes. it was sort of like. Uh, Condensed, so you could see where Russia was because it was like a big outlay of one color, and you yep. only make on maps one color um, next to each other if it's going to be one big country. So that's obviously yep. Russia. Okay, I like to look at Pete. Pretty, Pete pretty is stuff. apparently still smelly. He sprays liquid all over himself. Some sort of I don't know. It came in a tube. Yeah, I did. I thought it was poor point, poor poor ointment or something. Mm. But he sprayed it all over himself, so it obviously wasn't He didn't that. spray the Old Spice. No, there was, was Old there, Spice in the cupboard. Old Spice in the cupboard. Before and it was cool. You know what was even better? Up on the wall, there was his hat. A Coca-Cola hat. It was just in the background. There you go. Because they needed 
Coca-Cola's money as well, and they couldn't introduce Coke into the scene. Actually, you know what actually what would have happened? I know what happened. Coca-Cola wouldn't sign off on letting a Coke can be attacked trash to Pete uh, as trash. Someone else did it. I forget. Um, SPC, SPC and the Cornflakes company were like, yeah, this is fine. You can use an old SPC uh, Coke can. is not rubbish. But Coke was like, no, no, you're not having a can, but you've got to have a logo somewhere. That okay. actually, actually makes sense, yeah. Pete's still smelly, and he puts on the dump earring, I think in an attempt to make himself more presentable. because He brushes, the, he brushes it first with his toothbrush. He does. Which is even disgusting so yes. much. Like, does Pete have AIDS now? Uh, I don't know if he has AIDS, but he's got some sort of disease. It's Hepatitis. the early 90s. AIDS was everywhere. I'd be worried if I, I'd be worried I might have AIDS, but I mean... He probably has hepatitis, but I don't know. Isn't gold supposed to be, like, antimicrobial anyway? We, but is it actually said, gold? Yeah. It, it might be. Or if it's copper, though. If it's copper as well. Copper is antimicrobial. But that being said, it's not. It's a virus. I don't know. After putting the earring on, paper and rubbish flies everywhere all over himself. And he thinks it's the over sludge. Him. He thinks it's the sludge, yeah. Like, what Idiot. kind of this reasoning didn't happen before. is this? Never happened before. Put on the ring. Must be the sludge. You tricked it to me. <laughs> oh, fuck are you doing? Bronson's downstairs eating cornflakes. Linda makes... A comment that his feet are fairly smelly, and Bronson says this is because it's been more than six months since I washed my feet, which you know would cause your feet to be fairly smelly. I would imagine I mine imagine get smelly was... every day, and I wash them every night. I, you know, I imagine that actually there's probably some fungus growing on there. There's probably some serious Shit fungal loads infection. Of fungus in there. What? there his nails probably are growing underneath his nails. How is he not suffering serious injury or gangrene? That's fucking gross. Yeah. Pete comes downstairs. The rubbish is still attracted to him. Oh, it's the pollution, everyone. Yeah, yeah it's weird, Idiots. Right? When it was really his Western capitalist greed. <laughs> <laughs> Bronson starts throwing rubbish at Pete because, oh, look how funny it is. And uh, he pulls a fish skeleton out of the garbage. Randomly. Why would you have this? This is a... a it had all its bones skeleton. on it. A yep. complete fish skeleton except the head was yeah. still you know the fishy part and pulls it out and shoots it like an arrow at Pete don't and he, hits him in the face don't most people like with fish and prawns and any seafood once you've done with it if it's not close to if it's not like day or two from bin day don't you put it in a plastic bag and then in the freezer oh really that's what you're supposed to do because why because it because it's, it's smelly it degrades so quickly it attracts so many flies and maggots and it just stinks you put it in the freezer and then you take it out on bin night but no, he just has it there. It's just bloody fish for some reason. Cartoon fish skeleton. Yeah. Weird. We cut to the dump. Junior Gribble's missing. There's a police incident. Apparently they're looking for him to the dump. I don't really understand why. I guess that's where they think he went missing. Tony calls the house, the lighthouse, and tells them that there's a guy that can fix Pete's smell there. So yeah. you better bring Pete. I don't know why he would be there while they're looking for Junior Gribble, but, yeah. you know... Why not? This is like a serious thing too, right? Like, this Yeah, is real, this a is child's real, gone missing. Like, this is the first time we've ever seen the police on Round the Twist. Yes. Oh, no, no, wait, no. The, old, the first time no, they've, last, they've, last they've ever... The first time we've Pink bow tie. Yeah, the first time they've ever been called To by, Port Miranda. Yeah, well, I mean, they've been called for um, nefarious activities or something happening. Ah, yes. Like, yeah, there has been police chases, but they've never once called the police for anything else. Yes. Okay? This time is the only time the police have ever come to Port Miranda to investigate a mysterious situation. Thank God they finally have police in Port Miranda. They can sort this shit out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no more of these twist arrest, children bringing dragons. No. Yeah, I was going to say, arrest that dragon. Yeah, exactly. Arrest, <laughs> he's a bit matron. Just to arrest Bronson ahead of time. You know he's going to do something bad. Yeah, he's going to kill No. Yeah, he'll kill Nell eventually. He's coming back to kill her to take her Highlander powers. Yeah, exactly. The twist kids call a taxi. Why don't they just ride there? They've done it before. I don't know. Maybe they need to get there quickly. No, probably because of Pete plot, I guess. Pete, like, they were the, the thought might be, like, trash will just oh, yes. pile up on Pete. Yeah. But if they get into a taxi, at least it's sort of a shield. They, the kids get in the taxi. They wind up the windows. They get they stage up, get ready. Pete opens the door and runs to the taxi. And all this rubbish that the twists just have lying around, I imagine they're sculptures from Tony or something, they fly and it lands all over the car. And yeah. when Pete sits down in the front seat, cigarette butts from the ashtray go <laughs> all over his face. Yep. So he starts smoking. Yes. How? I know, he smoked cigarette butts. The ghosts, that we don't know who they are, yeah. show up and try and make some jokes. They say, that is not a handsome cab. Because it's covered in garbage. Yeah, but the guy makes a comment about it. Like, makes me think that he must have been an ex cabbie or something because he. Oh, who knows? Who knows, right? But like, I, 
whatever. These guys, these ghosts pop up for a random reason to say, hey, uh, we're here. Don't forget we're about ghosts. us. ghosts. Yep. As the cab's going to tip, this old lady's carrying her rubbish out to the bin and Pete, because he's attracting the rubbish because of his magic earring, attracts the rubbish bag and it flies and hits the car and just magnetizes the rubbish all around the car. Yeah. Also, the cabbie is getting quite irate and says this will be a a very expensive fare. You're going to have to pay for cleaning. You know, you've made a big mess of my car. There's rubbish everywhere. And Bronson pipes up with quote of the episode. Pete always brings his own tip. (sighs) Pun of the day. Pun of the day. Like, if was, you know, at season one, Pete would just be like, season one, Pete would have been all over face. that. He would have slapped him, Pete Bronson, around right the face, and was like, "No, no, that's my joke, mine." But now this, this season two, Pete just lets him have it. They're driving past a farm because you know that's what you do, and cow poo flies all over the car, which is trash. It's like it tracks trash, I guess. But poo isn't trash. Like I know it, it is, but it's like the poo gets used as fertilizer. So yes, whatever. And go on, what? Well, I thought you were going to go finish, like, get lead into the tramp getting pulled onto the car. Oh, I was going to say, the car's covered in rubbish, and it even attracts the tramp, who is riding by on his bicycle. Yes, he gets pulled to the car, right? Yes. And then the tramp sees his hat, and then is mysteriously able to put the hat back on his head. Yeah, even though it's not being... Yeah, and then he's able to take up the harmonica or something and start playing it. You know, it's not trash when someone starts using it. Another thing I don't like about season two is that in season one of Round the Twist, the rules of the paranormal events were yeah. very clear. We always got, this can happen, this this can't happen, and here's why. And it's usually because Nell would explain it to us. Yeah. We don't get that in season two. Yeah, no, we don't. The all, all-knowing Nell has just been delegated to being a Senate candidate and no longer our exposition person. Yeah, so we don't know what's happening, and they can change the rules at will. So I guess you can read in tons into this, but whatever. The, cap, the cabbie is... Fairly irate now. Of course it would be. The bloody cab is full of bloody trash. And the tramp is stuck to the back of the car, as with everything. The car Why, at this he, point, because he doesn't contribute to society? He's, he's useless waste of trash? Is that I it? thought it was just because he was wearing garbage. No, because like, he's wearing garbage. It's clothing. So it's, he's not stuck to the... He's, stu- he's the one that's stuck to the car. He's not, he's not being uh, useful to society. Or so they say. Back to the dump. Matron thinks that James has been taken advantage of. Fairly heavy for a 90s television yeah. show. It's like in Captain Planet where they talked about AIDS. Yeah, the AIDS episode. You know, this like, is a... you can like um you can still give him hugs or something. Uh, I don't know the blood transfusion that was how he got AIDS. Everyone thought, oh, you had one protected sex. I'm like, wow, that's a lot to level on an eight year old. Yeah, mm, AIDS. I didn't even know about They're that. They're talking about pedophilia here. Yeah, in Round the Twist. Oh, yeah. I think James has been taken advantage of. Heaviest line of yeah. definitely of the episode of the season. Yeah, probably. Not the, not the show, though, because we had uh, Bronson, the child murderer, yeah. in season one, yeah. which yeah. I still think takes the That's cake. probably the top one where he's like, he puts the baby back and it's like, it's time to go back, baby, and the baby starts choking. And then it's like, it can't breathe, Bronson, it can't breathe. <laughs> and he just looks at it with his single tear rolling down his cheek. Great, great, great moment. Bronson sees some Cadbury chocolate in the yeah. rubbish surrounding the car, opens the window a little bit, takes some and begins to eat it. Yeah. Pete calls him disgusting. He says, I think you're more disgusting than me. Fair point, because yeah. he is covered in toxic waste. Yeah, fair enough. The cab arrives at the tip. It's covered in rubbish. The twists don't have any money. Pete asks him to take a library card. Well, like, he doesn't ask him. He's like, what have you got? And he's like, he's got a library Do card. Do you take library cards? Uh, it's like a thing. Credit yeah. card joke. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, good. They end up giving the cabbie the earring and Linda's watch as collateral until they can pay for the car. As soon as he takes off the earring, the rubbish stops. And the twist can get out of the car, they're all fine. And uh, the cabbie puts on the earring and rubbish starts being attracted to him. And this is where Pete, the genius that he is, finally finally cottons on. Exit. Yep. What a dumbass. Oh, look, it's the earring. Take it off and it stops. So he does, and it does. It's still kind of gross, though, because that's collateral, right? That earring was collateral? Yeah. It's still like... Well, I imagine Tony can probably give the cabbie some money. No, I mean, like, that's still gross that the cabbie put it in his ear without even thinking. Oh, yeah. Yes, is right around when AIDS was an epidemic, or at least post-epidemic. How does he not even think or question, like, you know what, maybe maybe I should just rub it or wash it off first, or I won't put it in my ear, because, you know, like, what good is the earring to me now now that you've stuck it in your ear? It's worth less. You You actually owe me money. Yes. They see some rubbish going towards a small pile uh, in the background, and they wonder if James is under there. 
Maybe yep. Junior Gribbles under that big pile of rubbish, which he is. Yep. And he sticks his head out. Yep. And Pete says, take off, take off the earring. Take off the earring. It's how it works. But they don't listen to him because yep. he's a child. And a big waste truck of toxic waste begins backing up towards them. Yeah. And what's going to happen? Yep. It's goopy time. It's goopy time. The waste comes out of the back of the truck and covers them in waste. The well, rebels. I liked, I liked the ones, I liked it in the scene where like he was sticking his head out and he was trying to come out of the trash pile and then Gribble Senior goes, push, push. And the way that he's coming out is exactly looks like he's not coming out with his hands forward. He's coming out with his hands behind him, like at his sides and face down. So it's like, yeah, okay, we get it. It's, it's basically, it's symbolic saying that trash is giving birth to trash. The Gribbles... I, th- I like that. I like Anti-capitalist. Well, I don't think it was anti-capitalist. I think it was just that Gribbles were trashy people. And the Gribbles are kind of trashy people. And trash gives birth to trash. Yes. So, very nice. And that's the end of the episode. Did you have anything that you wanted to talk about extra? Uh, I did, but I mean, we went what? over it. Uh, it was the, um, the whole idea about how trash... What trash is. What defines trash. We talked about that. Did we? Did we? I don't think we did. We did briefly. We might have touched on it briefly, I guess, yeah. It was the idea. Because I was like, it was a big thing. Where it was like how like the homeless guy can pick up the things. Once he picked them up and starts using them, they have a utilitarian function. And then all of a sudden, they're not trash anymore. They're yes. a tool. Is trash something that society says, this is garbage, you don't want to use this? Or is trash when you personally need to use it and you seek value in it? What defines trash? Because like there's cow patties. They're trash, but if you put them in your garden bed, they're not trash. I mean, they are fertilizer. Yes. So, would fertilizer be attracted to the taxi? I don't know. That's what I want to talk about. But Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Well, well talked. Well talked, well discussed. How did you feel about today's episode? How many bowls of spaghetti would you give it out of ten? Well, I know you didn't like it. <laughs> well, I didn't not like it. I just thought it was a bit nothing. I liked it. I thought... Uh, There's a lot to talk about in it. S- Seven? Seven bowls? Yeah. I yeah, I'll, it good. I'll give it I'll give it six because although I was in the biggest fan, yeah. there is a, there is a lot going on here in yeah. the, the political kind of stuff. It's a lot more deeper too, and like at least in themes than you get an average round of twist. Yes. Like, oh wow, a child's actually missing. They're called in the police. This could have been an episode of this could have been a part of Blue Healers, you know? You could have yes. jump cut to us I don't know, Blue Healers where they're interrogating someone and goes, Well we know where that gribble boy is, we know you've got him or something, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I like Blue Hills. Interesting. Yeah. If you want to know more about Round the Twist or Tales from the Twists, which is the podcast that you're listening and not the TV show that we talk about, yes. you can find us online in a myriad of different places, including Twitter. We're on Twitter, Twitter, right? We're on the Twitter. It's where TFT Twists. At TFT Twists. At TFT plural. Twists. We're also on Facebook. Yep, at Tales from the Twists. I believe we're on iTunes. We're on iTunes. We are at Tales from the Twists, the plural version, guys. What's our name on Stitcher? Oh, I don't know. Tales from the Twists. And like, I don't even know how Stitcher really works. I think it's just a catcher for your iTunes oh, okay. client. So, uh, I... And what's our name on Instagram? Instagram. Our name on Instagram is... We don't have an Instagram. That's an interesting name. It's an interesting name. Yeah, look that up and you won't find us. Good. Yeah. Makes a joke every when, week. when are we going to get Instagram? When are we going to get Instagram? Been, we've got lots of pictures to post. I guess we do. All right, well, I'll put up on my Instagram account then. And then you're then, not going to. I'm not going to. I've never <laughs> made one. It's dumb. I don't get it. I don't see the point. If, you, if you're interested in contacting us, please do. Yeah. And we'll put your feedback on the show. Yeah. We've got a, a thing coming up next week where we're going to be talking to one of our listeners. Yeah, one of our listeners wrote in and was like, Hey, man, love to do some correspondence or some work. So hopefully we can get that started out next week. What's his name? Shit, I forgot. My phone is off. Well, you'll hear so if I you want to know what his name is. I know it's on Facebook and I need to go have a look. But you know who you are. You're listening and you're like, If you yeah, want to know who they're talking is. about me. Yeah, and if yeah. you want to if you want to get in on that action. Yeah, you want to send us like your theories. Maybe you want to watch the episode ahead and be like, oh, this is what I read into it. Just send us a, send us a message. Send us an email. Yeah. You know, say, say hello to us. Call us assholes, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, just say something. That'd be cool. Yeah. Excellent. And that's all we have time for on this week's episode of Tales from the Twists. My name is Joe Lewis. And I'm Anthony Bull. Stay twisty. See ya.